Hey, how's it going everybody? My name's Tony and I want to help you learn how to design t-shirts and other stuff even if you have zero design experience. Today we're going to be taking a photo and putting it inside of some text and our final design is going to look something like this. Now the great thing about this type of design is you have two levels of personalization. You have the text which you can make say anything you would like this could be for a birthday, it could be for Mother's Day, Father's Day, it could be for an anniversary, it could be for a wedding, and then you have the photo. Now you can take one big image like I did, or you can take multiple images and make a photo collage. Right now, personalized items for pet owners is a huge market, so you can do some pet themed designs, put those on shirts, mugs, anything else you can think of. You can do poster prints, and people will buy them because it's personalized and by adding the photo you're giving it a little bit more sentimental value. I really believe that designing personalized items is the way to go especially if you're on Etsy because that's what people are looking for. One of the big things that led me to personalization is I was doing a lot of original designs and they were being copied by other people and as more people copied them they got less sales and I noticed even the people who were copying weren't getting that many sales and you could go to any big box retail store and you would see even they started copying some of the more clever slogans and funny shirts that were on the various sites where people like you and I would be selling our designs and our original ideas with personalization the big stores can't compete with that people can't just take your idea and run with it and say oh well this is a trending topic so I'm gonna do my version of that it makes it a little harder because you have to be willing to put in the work and the people who are selling on the print-on-demand sites can't just make personalized items so you're already whittling it down from what the big box stores could do to what the people on the POD sites could do to what the people who are actively selling and designing can do and that's a big advantage you can still do the funny slogans and sayings and all of that type of stuff, but I would definitely recommend at least trying to pepper in some of the personalized items and see how they do for you. It really transformed my business and got it moving in a positive direction after a bunch of ups and downs. And I believe it really is something that you should be trying just to see how it works for you. Maybe personalization isn't your thing. Maybe it's the greatest thing you've ever tried. You can start with some really simple designs and they'll be easy to customize. And it's a great way to connect with customers. Photo gift is a really good search term on sites like Etsy. So why not just jump in, get started, and see what it could do for you. Anyways, let's just jump right into Illustrator and we'll start designing. All right, we're in Illustrator. So the first thing I wanna do here is make a couple of guides. And quite honestly, in this step, it doesn't matter how big your canvas is or how far apart you put your guides. Since this is vector, we can work as large or as small as we want, and we're not gonna lose any quality when we resize. So I'll bring in one guide here at about one inch, then another guide here, an inch in the, in the opposite direction. And I'm just gonna type out three words here make sure that my colors are set so I have black in the foreground and no stroke. We'll get our type tool here and type in and do all caps best. We'll change this typeface to impact. Now I'm going to use impact here because it's very bold and all of the openings in the letters, these little negative space parts are very small. So we're gonna get the maximum coverage. And then I'm gonna make sure my tracking is pretty tight on this. And then let me I'll go in and fix whatever kerning I think. So I have that. I'm gonna type in dad in all caps and impact. I'm gonna bring that in. And then we're gonna type in ever in all caps. Same thing in impact. And it doesn't really matter right now what size these are because what I'm going to do is take each letter and just make them each word and make it the same width. So the thing here is on some of these typefaces, you type them in and then you see this big giant bounding box here. Now I don't really like that because it's going to make it difficult selecting things. And since I already have this typed out how I want it, I can convert it to outlines. 
If this is a design I'm going to do as a templated design, then I'll definitely keep a copy of it with the text still editable. So I won't convert it to outlines and you're going to need to do adjustments that way anyways. So we'll select all of this, go to type, create outlines. And that's just going to turn the type into outlines instead of being something that I can edit and change the words. So then I'll bring this one here. So make sure I snap it to that guide, resize it, hold down shift to constrain my proportions. Bring that to that guide. Then we'll move it up. And this is why I like to work small a lot of times because this is already taking up so much of the canvas, but we'll do the same here. And what you need to do here is zoom in close just to make sure that you're actually on the guides. We'll do that on both sides here. And that looks good. And that looks good. Then we'll do that with this word. We're going to zoom in here. Make sure that we're on the guide. And then we'll move these words so they e look pretty evenly spaced visually. I don't want to bring them in so they're too close to each other. I, this looks about good. It's nice and legible. Then I could select all of this, copy it, and then bring it into Photoshop. Now I have a canvas here and it's 13 by 19 and it's 300 DPI. But if I'm working with other people's photos, I'll usually set the DPI to about 200 because a lot of times people will give you photos and the quality is pretty bad and the larger you have to scale them, the worse they look. So ideally you want to be printing your stuff at 300 DPI, but I can go down to even 150 if I really need to and it won't look too bad, mostly because you're printing it on a garment. And if you're printing it on a mug, then you can, you know, shrink it down pretty small, but large, you're printing it on a garment and you're going to lose a little bit of fidelity there anyways. So it's not a huge deal, but the, the bigger the photo you can get to start with, the bigger your file could be, the better off you'll be. So I selected this photo here of myself having a great time at a tea party with my daughter. And I'm just gonna take the text we copied, paste it here as a smart object. Now, if I paste it as pixels, the quality is gonna change as I enlarge or reduce it. I can do it as a path, but I don't really want a path. I just, I want something that I can see. I haven't really done much with shape layers, but smart object will basically take the info from Adobe Illustrator and bring it into Photoshop. So if I make this bigger or smaller, it's still going from the original vector information and you don't lose any quality at all. So we're gonna paste that in here. We'll just set, make sure this is centered. And then the next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna adjust the color. So I'll go to image, adjustments, hue, saturation, brightness, which is control U or command U on your keyboard, click this colorize, make sure my preview is on. And I'm gonna make this a little bit lighter. I'm gonna bump up that saturation and make it, I'll make it like a greenish color. Now I'm gonna go here and change the opacity on this. And I'll make this about 60. With this selected, as long as I am not using a brush or one of those type of tools, I can just push uh, one of the number keys. So if I want, if I have this move tool selected here and I want to change the opacity, I, if I push zero on my keyboard, it goes to 100, nine goes to 90%, eight goes to 80 and so on. So we'll make this 60%. And then when I bring in my photo, you can see exactly how your picture looks underneath that type and what you need to do to adjust it. So I might need to make this smaller or larger. You'll see that my photo ends before the limits of the word here. So if I just printed this, it would have a white line at the bottom once I'm done with, with what I'm going to do here. 
So I just want to make that at least as big as the photo or move it or as big as the type and move it down. And then the other thing is I want to make sure that my photo is lined up in a way that I like it inside of the text. So I can see here that my eye is going to be outside of the limits of the text and it's just going to cut off. So I can move this over a little bit. I can move things up or down. And then once I have it about how I like it, and how I think it's going to look good. Then what I'll do is go here to my vector smart object, hold down the control key or the command key if I'm on Mac and left click with my mouse. Now I can hide this layer and you'll see it gives me the the marching ants of the outline here. This, so this is what's selected. And once I have this selected, I can go ahead and Make sure I'm on my photo layer. Go to this add layer mask button, click on it. And now it's masked off everything that wasn't selected. And if I'm doing um, direct to garment type of printing or printing on a black mug or some type of all over sublimation, I can change this background to whatever color I want that I think looks good. And you know, it it'll work that way. I could print on white. Now you'll notice on white, this isn't very legible. So what I'm going to do is make a layer beneath my photo, hold down my control key, command key on Mac and click on this layer mask. So now that I have that selection, I'll make sure that my foreground color here is black. Then I'll go to edit stroke and I'll add a center stroke on that. We'll go with 22 pixels and see how that looks. And now that's made an outline here, which gives it a little more readability, but we might want to see if we can add one more layer because you'll see like the outline here and the B kind of blends in with my background. So now I'm going to make a layer above the photo. So I'll go to my photo, add new layer, control click on my mask again. This time I'm going to make sure that my foreground color is white. We'll make another stroke. This time we're going to do an inside stroke and we're going to make this one much smaller than the 22 pixel stroke I made on that outside. We'll make this one like eight. That's still too big. We'll make this a four point stroke. And now you'll see that with the inner stroke, now you can see the text a little bit more. And then the next thing I want to show you here is on this layer with the layer mask, there's this little link button. Now what that does is it links my actual photo in the layer or anything that's on this canvas in that layer with the mask. So if I'm on my photo and I move it, it also moves the mask. So I can unlink that, just click on that little chain link thing. And then now when I move it, I can just move my photo around and resize it. Now once I'm here, I can just go ahead and print this like this send it to my sublimation printer. I can print on a mug or if I want, I can also manipulate the photo here. So you might want to colorize it and just go with a certain color theme. I can desaturate it a little bit, give it a little bit of a vintage type of look. You can do add any kind of effects that you want, but that's pretty much, everything that you need to know about that. I can change the color of my stroke. And like I said, I could just not have any stroke at all. And we could put this on a colored background. Just like that. And of course, the darker this background is, the more you're going to be able to see that or the lighter. 
just depends if you're, if you're kind of in the middle it makes it harder to see when it's blending in with these tones or I can go ahead and do a colored background here and then play around with the stroke color make that colored and the possibilities are pretty much endless but once I have this basic design and I know how to add a photo I can put this on Etsy or on the Facebook marketplace or pretty much anywhere and sell this I could make this a photo collage type of thing where you take a bunch of photos you can do this for birthdays for anniversaries Father's Day Mother's Day pretty much any occasion you can think of and this is gonna be something that sells because people love personalized items they love photo items they love memories they love things that are nostalgic so what you really need to do is just pick a, a saying that you want to say pick a product that you want to put it on and just start putting it out there and this is going to be something that sells year round because it can be for any occasion you just want to make sure that you're using the right keywords that you're selling it to the right audience and you could be getting multiple orders a day. Once you figure out what people like, then you could build on that too. So it doesn't have to say best dad ever, best mom ever. You can make a family reunion theme shirt like this. The possibilities are truly endless. So hopefully this helped you. I have a Facebook group linked in the description. Please join, ask any questions about anything. I would like to help with some critiques help you learn some new things, help you figure out how to sell things. Thanks for stopping by, keep on designing, and I hope to see you on the next one. And th this'll make you... And you could be getting multiple orders a day. Once you figure out what people like, then you could build on that too. So it doesn't have to say best dad ever, best mom ever. It could say best teacher ever, best, you know, whatever. It could say best teacher ever. You could make one for... It could say best teacher ever. You can make a family reunion theme shirt with these. You can make a family reunion theme shirt like this. You can make pretty much... The possibilities are really... The possibilities are truly endless. So... Hopefully this helped you. I have a Facebook group linked in the description. Please join, ask any questions about anything. I would like to help with some critiques, help you learn some new things, help you figure out how to sell things. Thanks for stopping by, keep on designing, and I hope to see you on the next one.